Okay, I tell you. Um, technology is great when it works, okay? Um, I tried this live stream on my public page and then it crashed. So you know what? I'm giving it another go because this word needs to go forth. It should it bless me and I pray that it blesses some one of you. Um Please pardon me. I am I am typically up this late. I would normally be having a class right now, but my class was canceled due to a university event. But I just wanted to take a moment, y'all, and just get in with you. I know it's late, but if you're up and just have a moment to be blessed um, by the word of God, just hang with me for a little bit. Okay, I hope not to keep you long, but... I, I was not going to go to bed tonight before I shared this word. So, um, again, just, just hang with me. Um, this morning, uh, as I was praying and studying, um, I, I wanted to give reverence and reflection to Yom Kippur. And I don't know if you're familiar with the Jewish um, holiday festival, whatever you want to call it, Day of Atonement. Um, but it's the day when, when, uh, when the Israelites celebrated their sins being forgiven and their names being sealed in the book of life. Okay. And so I, I certainly feel that as Christians, we don't do enough reflection and remembrance of Jewish festivals. Um, uh, we need to remember how far God has brought his children, that we're, we are those those heirs we are those descendants and it's so important for us to remember how far God has brought his children and um, so I wanted to just take this day to reflect on that and so I, I, was, I was studying Leviticus chapter 16 um, which is the, the whole chapter is about the day of atonement and um, I just wanted to highlight some things that truly bless me um, in, in remembering and reflect, reflecting on this day. Um, because, you know, the Day of Atonement wasn't just for the Israelites, but I thank God that 2,020 years ago, He gave us the final Day of Atonement. And that was through um, the, the sacrifice and the resurrection of His Son, Jesus Christ. But... You know, as I was reading this chapter, um, some things really jumped out to me. And um, the first thing was that, you know, we have to think about the fact that before Jesus came and we were covered by his grace, um, the only way to salvation, you know, was through fulfillment of the Ten Commandments. You had to follow God's law. And if you didn't follow God's law, it was better, you know, it was that they were basically told to um, kill people who repeatedly sinned and, and, and brought, you know, all kinds of sin and disgrace to the tribe. I mean, that's how serious it was that, you know, they would just be cut off. And I, I think that we often forget that. It's like as if we feel like we can live any kind of way and there won't be any consequence for the way that we live. But even though God provided a day of atonement, there was still judgment, right? There was still this sense of being held accountable for the way that they were living. And, um, you know, so we really we we need to think about that and i think if we if we took a moment to think about that that we would be even more grateful for what jesus christ did for us that by confession of our faith and full surrender to his to his will and his way that jesus began the process of justification and sanctification in our life and and that's a key thing um because during this day of atonement, it says in verse um, 30 that on that day, offerings of purification will be made for you and you will be purified in the Lord's presence for all of your sins. And that's what Jesus did for us so that we could stand in the presence of God. 
and he see his children that resemble his son Jesus, his perfect son. So when I know that when he looks at me, God doesn't see my imperfection. He doesn't see my, my sin and my guilt and my shame, but he sees his daughter in the image of his son, Jesus, the perfect lamb of God. And I'm so thankful. You know, um, you know, it's like today we often think that ministers and pastors have it hard. And certainly, certainly, you know, anyone that's called to that, that position of being a shepherd, yes, it is difficult. But I, I laugh um, uh, at this idea that is nothing compared to what they had to deal with in the Old Testament. Um, chapter 16 opens with this verse saying, The Lord spoke to Moses after the death of Aaron's two sons, who died after they entered the Lord's presence and burned the wrong kind of fire before him. They burned the wrong kind of fire before God and were put to death. And I, and I had to stop and reflect and say, God, help me to always burn the right kind of fire before you that if i burn god that there's a if there's a refinement that's happening is towards the things of your heart that is to be in your will okay but not not burning having a passion and burning of a fire to do things that i feel like i need to do for my own sake but to burn the right fire, God, that is going to put me on the path to righteousness and doing the will of God, doing your will, Father. And so, I mean, gosh, verses two, I mean, actually all the way up into verse 29 is God giving specific directions to the priests, the Levites, oh, exactly what they were supposed to do. Um, specifically in this passage, it was Aaron he was talking to, but he also says that this will be the law that they will follow for generation to generation. So not just Aaron, but his future descendants and being of the Levites. So, but this is what really, really got me. Oh, it blessed me. Verse 20, it says, when Aaron has finished purifying the most holy place and the tabernacle and the altar, he must present the live goat. Now that jumped out to me because all throughout, you know, the Old Testament and anytime you're looking at sacrifice and making offerings unto, to the Lord, something had to die. Something had to die. But in this case, Aaron was supposed to present a live goat. And it says that he will lay both of his hands on the goat's head and confess over it all the wickedness, rebellion, and sins of the people of Israel. In this way, he will transfer the people's sins to the head of the goat. Then a man, specially chosen for the task, meaning anointed, okay? That's all that anointing means, that you're specially chosen for the task. So a man who's anointed, to do this task will drive the goat into the wilderness as the goat goes into the wilderness and we know there's some things some powerful things that happen in the wilderness oh i won't go there with you tonight but that wilderness let me tell you don't fret the wilderness because you get closer to God in the wilderness. There's deliverance in the wilderness. There's growth in, ooh, in the wilderness. Thank you, Lord. And it says that it will carry all the people's sins upon itself into a desolate land. Desolate, far removed. Amen. And I was thinking about the fact that 2,020 years ago, Jesus, the precious Lamb of God, was our scapegoat. He took on all of our sin, our shame, everything that would separate us from God. He took it upon himself. He was our scapegoat. 
so that we could be reconciled to our Father once and for all, that at the confession of our faith, that we will begin the sanctification and justification process that will lead us on a path to righteousness so that when we face final judgment, God will say, well done, my good and faithful servant, you have done my will. Then upon that we shall be saved. That is why Jesus did what he did. So that we can live an abundant life now. That we can live a righteous life now. A holy life now. A life that will please God now. So that we can reap our full reward. He took on our sin and took it to a desolate hand, land, to the pits of hell from which all sin came. And not only was he the scapegoat, metaphorically, but he was our scapegoat supernaturally because he was the greatest of all time. Of all time. Jesus Christ, our scapegoat, the greatest of all time, who when God looks at Jesus, he saw a perfect son. And I'm so grateful that now when Jesus looks at, when God looks at me, he sees his son, Jesus. That, that's who he sees. He doesn't see all the shame and regret and the sin and all the mistakes I constantly make. But he sees me in the image of his son and I'm just so grateful you know and that's another reason that I just wanted to take this time and reflect on Yom Kippur because we all hope and pray that our names are being sealed in the book of life that's isn't that why we're here isn't that why we're we're going through trials and tribulations, sharing in the, the suffering of Christ, sharing in his death so that we can reap the full reward? But the word tells us, Jesus says himself, that only those who endure to the end shall be saved. So y'all hang in there. Hang in there. God has given us everything we need through his son, Jesus. To be able to fulfill every um, requirement, high standard he has for us. And I just I just love it. It says um, in verses 29, on the 10th day of the appointed month in early autumn. And we know the 10th day, number 10, is representative of a test. Okay? There's some testing here, or some trying here. And it says, you must deny yourselves. You must deny yourself. What does it mean to deny ourselves? It means to put down our will, to surrender our will, our way, our desires, our goals, all of it. Our glory for God's will, his way, his glory, his desires for us. It says, we must deny ourselves. Neither native-born Israelites nor foreigners living among you may do any kind of work. And that's important. That God is saying to, to honor the Sabbath. And I think too often we lose sight of honoring the Sabbath and, and really being grateful for what God gave us in the Sabbath. Rest. Giving us a moment to reflect uh, throughout the week the goodness of God. To, to steal away and, and remove distractions of, of work and, and all the things that tend to stress us out. To just be in the presence of God and be thankful for who he is and what he's done. That is the importance of the Sabbath. And it says that this is a permanent law for you. On that day, offerings of purification will be made for you, and you will be purified in the Lord's presence from all your sins. It will be a Sabbath day of complete rest for you, and you must deny yourselves. So today, as we're, we're you know, it's nighttime, and Yom Kippur has come to a close, 
I, I just hope that whether it's tonight that you're seeing this video, whether it's tomorrow, next week, next month, that you will just take a moment to reflect on how far God has brought his children. That as many times as we sin, we fall short, we break his heart, we turn against him, we don't do the right thing, we seek our will and not his own, that you still, in the midst of all of that, he made a way. He made a way when he didn't have to make a way for us to be forgiven, to be reconciled, to be whole and purified, sanctified, justified in his presence. He didn't have to do it, but he did. And who wouldn't want to serve a God like that? I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. And I pray that this video touches you deep within your heart to really just take a moment to reflect on the goodness of God and all that he has done for us. All those many years ago, and even today, even today. And certainly I want to end by saying, if you don't have a relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ, you do not know love. You don't know love. I don't care. You, you, you can't go through, you can't get to God any other way because to know Christ is to know how much God loves you. To know how much he loves you, how much he desires to be in relationship with you. That is the importance of knowing Jesus and what he did for you. How he took on your sin, your shame, your guilt. Because on your own, you could have never gotten it right. Never, ever, ever. You're not good enough. You're not kind enough. You're not sweet enough. You don't obey the law enough. There's nothing you could have done because we all fall short. We were born into singing. We were born to rebel against God. And only through reconciliation through Christ Jesus are we born again. Do we have that second birth into the spirit, into the light. That we may please God and be in relationship with him. So my prayer is that you desire that relationship and that if you don't have one, that you will pray this prayer. God, I come before you confessing my sin, knowing that I am nothing without you. God, I invite Jesus Christ, your son, into my life. I believe that he lived, that he suffered and died, and that he rose again with all power. After defeating death and shaming sin, God, that now he sits at the right hand of, your, of you as he's preparing a place for your children. That he's preparing our just reward, God, and that he's going to return again. I believe that. And I ask him to come and take lordship in my life, that he reign that I can be in relationship with you, that I can receive the power of the Holy Spirit to live a righteous life that you had called me to. God, I, I don't know how to do it on my own and I don't want to do it on my own. So God, teach me, instruct me, call me into your presence. Call me, teach me how to pray. Teach me how to study your word so that I may grow in knowing in my knowledge of you and intimacy with you so that I can be everything that you call me to be. In Jesus' name, we pray, amen. And if you pray that prayer with me in faith, that your new journey, your new life has begun with Jesus Christ. He is, he is there with you right now, smiling, and heaven is rejoicing that you are in relationship with Jesus Christ and you have been reconciled to your Father. Now, the road ahead is going to be tough because the devil is mad. He, he's had you and he no longer has his grips on you. But I want to tell you, don't give up. 
You have um, brothers and sisters, believers all over the world and local community and church with you who's praying for you. I'm praying for you. And I just want you to know that God is for you. And he'll never leave you nor forsake you. So be blessed. I pray that you were encouraged by this 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 word, um, this video, and that um, you will go and reflect on the goodness of Jesus. You're not watching this by accident. No, no, no. This was not by accident. You didn't just happen to be scrolling. Okay? But you, you were here for a purpose. Don't let it be in vain. God bless you. I love you and have a great night.